Welcome to Friends. We are really fortunate to have with us today Lina Mangane from MSF Access Campaign. MSF, as we all know, stands for Medicine Sans Frontiers or Doctors Without Borders, which is so very important when we are dealing with health issues. Welcome, Lina. Thank you. Lina, can you please elaborate upon? How important is it to involve communities at grassroots levels when it comes to TB prevention, diagnosis and treatment? And are we doing enough of it? Yeah, well, we started to make some strides, some progress. But, you know, TB has always been treated in policy maker circles as the domain of uh, doctors, you know. And somehow you need to bring the social into the medical. And I'll give an illustration of this, uh, you know, the largest killer of people living with HIV in India is TB. So out of 50,000 deaths that happen, perhaps 40,000 are attributable to TB. Now, screening in, in people who are most vulnerable to dying of TB in people living with HIV, the screening tool has not been included as in the HIV and the TB program. That goes to show that when you're talking about elimination, you're not talking about the most marginalized. So it's been uh, eight years since the screening tool, the WHO, the TB LAM has been recommended. But both the TB and the HIV program are yet to roll it out. So that clearly shows that unless you bring the demands of the community onto the table of policy makers, you're constantly going to struggle with the final goal of elimination. Just to give you another illustration, you know, uh, the experience of women who have had TB particularly the kind of discrimination and stigma uh, leading to domestic violence, um, the experience of women uh, who have faced uh, uh, eviction from their homes, lost custody of their children, and addressing those issues of stigma and discrimination will finally bring the TB program to start addressing the needs of women. For that, we need organizations that work, work on gender and health to be part of conferences like this or part of uh, the TB programs, efforts to involve community. These are just two illustrations. Um, again, you know, uh, if you if you look at uh, the challenges of uh, diagnosing TB in children, we know that the scientific progress has been made. The WHO recommends that you can use a stool sample in CBNAT. However, there are no groups that work on uh, TB and child rights as part of this conference or other conferences who will say well you know you're recommending so much for adults where is the same level of commitment for children so I think these are some of the challenges we face when we look at can we achieve the goal of elimination without rights you can't you know achieve public health goals um, another very good illustration is uh, people who use drugs you, I, my personal experience of people who use drugs are that they are very vulnerable to TB and they tend to have challenges with adherence. They need preventive therapy. But again, the organizations that work on harm reduction are never involved in TB work. So I think these are the challenges of, you know, a rights-based approach to public health. And I think no country can dream of eliminating or reducing TB to the numbers that they have committed to in the SDGs. Without in, in the final mile, you have to work with, with these interventions on gender and health, child rights and health, um, you know, uh, people who work with drug users and harm reduction, people living with HIV, all of those communities will become very important for the NTEP. So multi-sectoral uh, uh, multi approach is very important, involving uh, not only all the sectors, but also all classes of people. Absolutely. I think the government runs some fantastic social programs. Now, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the program that looks at uh, malnutrition in children, right? And you have feeding programs going across the country. You've got the Anganwaris. Uh, and you, you know that there's a link uh, between malnutrition and TB. And I think this is where a lot of effort needs to be made to look at whether, you know, addressing malnutrition or, you know, children with TB have uh, needs relating to nutrition and can they be linked to social programs that already exist. 
um, so I think this is these are this is the need of the hour. Now, if you look at cochlear implants for people who who received injectables as part of DRTV regimens, they've lost their hearing and they need cochlear implants or other devices. And you have programs of the government which funds cochlear implants for children, for example. Why can we not have it? Why can't the TB program, for example, link up with the programs that look at disability? And, you know, people who've been treated for DRTV and have lost the hearing or need devices like cochlear implants also receive support from the programs that the government runs on disability. So I think these are some of the classic examples that you need a uh, cross, you know, uh, multi-sectoral approach. Um, of course, you know, the fact that we need uh, more social security for people who are undergoing TB treatment um, is a known fact that when you undergo TB treatment, uh, loss of employment is very common. How can we protect people who are undergoing TB treatment um, to, to be protected? And, you know, this is why the HIV AIDS law was so dramatically important for people living with HIV. It protected them in healthcare, in employment, in preventive services, and perhaps TB uh, needs to start looking at some of those models. Yeah. You spoke of cochlear implants, and that brings me to the question that now we have uh, TB drug regimens for uh, DRTB for the multi drug resistant TB which are all oral and have lesser side effects. What about having access to those treatments for the people who need them most? Yes. So I think this is where India and the NTEP are making the most progress. I think they recognize this is the low hanging fruit, you know, that they can roll out short oral regimens for adults quite quickly. It's cost effective. Uh, it will uh, allow India to progress quite quickly to the elimination goals that they have set for themselves. So, you know, I, I would say that if you are looking at uh, March as a very important uh, month in TB where you have the World TB Day, I am sure, you know, with the new guidelines that are going to come out from the government, 2022-2023 guidelines of PMDT will have the shorter oral regimens um, as part of uh, treatment regimens uh, for adults. And those can be as short as six months. Um, they can uh, be uh, easily rolled out with CBNAT, rifampicin resistance. So people who don't have fluoroquinolone resistance can receive BPAL-M. And people who have fluoroquinolone resistance are later found to have fluoroquinolone resistance can, you know, reduce, you know, just take BPAL for the rest of the regimen. So you're going to see a dramatic change in short oral regimens for adults. But I would say that for children, the challenge is bigger because you have pediatric formulations now, a dramatic decrease in the price of linoxylate, for example. You have child-friendly formulations of linoxylate. But what we don't have is generic competition or a reduction in price for the pediatrics of Deliminate. Now, Deliminate constitutes 70% of the cost of a DRTV regimen. So, unless we reduce costs for Deliminate, or the government decides that, you know, we need to provide children with the best regimen uh, of betacolin and deliminate, uh, then we are going to see much less progress in children. One of the reasons you see much less progress towards oral regimens for children is also the lack of adoption of the stool gene expert. So stool TBNAT, uh, stool as a specimen to diagnose children with TB and DRTB, is going to be the critical tool that will, you know, provide much more effective TB treatment for children. So, we are on a cusp of breakthrough for adults with short oral regimens and I would say, you know, like to congratulate all those experts who have been working with the government to get the new guidelines out. On children, we need much more, uh, 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 you know, much more effort on policy. Um, I think the stool specimen for CBNAT, the validation of the school specimen for CBNAT needs to be incorporated into the guidelines. It's not happening fast enough. Uh, we don't want to leave children behind. Uh, and I think this is this is one of the biggest breakthroughs we've had in, in TB for children that you can do uh, the CBNAT based on a school stool specimen. Yeah. But we had been waiting for that for so long. And when it is there, why is it that we are not able to 
incorporated in our guidelines. Of course, children don't have a voice of their own, but still, uh, there was yeah. so much of uh, effort going on. Exactly. Forward. Children don't have a voice of their own. Um, uh, they are not part of any CCM uh, processes or part of speaking on podiums where TV survivors make their point. Um, number two is this that, uh, that, you know, TV and children has always been a very neglected, uh, pop this is a very neglected population. So if TV is neglected, uh, children with TV are neglected, uh, are, are at the bottom of the hierarchy. Um, and when we look at diagnostics and we look at regimens, we need to start thinking how can we replicate this for children fast, faster? Um, and, you know, it's heartbreaking that one of the countries that has um, uh, so much TB in children, who's doing a fantastic job on starting to provide TB preventive therapy to children, is still to make the same progress on a basic test such as CBNAT uh, for children. So I think um, I would, uh, you know, appeal to the NTEP and the experts who ad advise the NTEP that, you know, at least for this year, uh, recognize tool as a specimen for CBNAT for children so that we can make better progress. Thank you, Lina. You're welcome. And uh, your message for World TV Day, you said March is a very important month. World TV Day is a very I'm not an expert on this. No. <laughs> so, yeah. World TV Day message, March being an important month. Yeah, I, I you know, I think. We really need to celebrate this World TV Day, you know. I mean, it's come at a time when we are just recovering from the pandemic, right? And we know that TV numbers are, are going up. But the, the, you know, the silver lining in the cloud is this, that you can see that people are back to working quite hard to, you know, to implement the NTEP. And I think the silver lining is the kind of scientific progress that has been made in TV. You can see it in TB preventive therapy. You can see it in the test and diagnostics we are talking about. You can see it in the short oral regimens for DRTB, the short uh, regimen for ch children for DSTB. Yes. I think this is the moment in terms of bringing, you know, science has made progress on TB. So I think this is a celebration that we should have in this World TB Day. And I think we should start planning how we're going to implement as you know as researchers as scientists as treatment providers as you know public health activists how are we going to implement all the scientific progress into the hands of people who are most affected yeah and transforming scientific gains into public health gains absolutely that, yeah that is important thank you Lena. you and friends we were listening to Lena Mangane that is conversation with her at the 77th NATCON, the national conference of tuberculosis and chest diseases which is being held in agra india these days thank you right <laughs>